what do you do when you see your printer with like tickets just spewing out the rails not only full but then you have like a stack of five tickets right here because the rail ended and then there's a bunch of tickets coming out of the printer on top of it this may not work for your restaurant but i'm going to tell you what i do and this will at least give you an opening to see what's going on i look at everything else around me how is my line organized do i know what all the orders are on the flat top on the grill in the fryer clean up your space Get towels out, clean everything around you, get it clean, get it organized. Make sure you have things stocked. There's a difference between just being slow and bad at your job and moving with intent. You have to take into account the order in which the food is coming up and how quickly the servers can run the food and if you have hands available in the kitchen. Sometimes you'll get really busy, but everybody's ordering really easy stuff, so it's easy for you to stay on top of it, and you're not even breaking 20-minute ticket times with a full restaurant, 150, 200-seat restaurant. That's going to be a problem for the servers, because that means you're going to be putting food up faster than a server is going to be able to run the food. There's no point in making the food, having it die in the window, then refiring the food. So the outer expo and the inner expo definitely need to be in communication with each other and make sure that you have an understanding of what the servers can handle and whether or not cooks might be able to help run some of that food. That'll get you a lot of brownie points with the servers. The servers, one thing that they can do to help is they can communicate to the back of house, hey, we just had like three or four tables come in. I would prepare to have a really busy night. The servers communicating to the back of house is very important. This is why you need to be nice to your servers. There's a lot of other reasons, including that they're humans. Outside of that, you need to be able to count on them as part of a team. It isn't front of house versus back of house. It is front of house and back of house working as a cohesive unit. Because if front of house is constantly getting yelled at by back of house, they may not want to come back and tell you guys that they're seating a bunch of people then you're gonna just start getting a bunch of tickets. And then you're, one of the other cooks is gonna say something like, what the f is this blah, blah, blah. it's a Tuesday. Blah. Another thing that the servers can do is once they realize that tables are being sat, not only can they say something to you specifically, but they can investigate by chatting with the tables through casual conversation. Is it a special occasion? Is there a birthday? Now you can respond before it becomes a shit show. Do you have things like uh, really thick chicken breast, really thick steaks, um, well done steaks, stuff like that. Get the stuff that takes the longest started. Once the things that take the longest are started, you now have a time limit because you know that a chicken, say, takes 10 minutes minimum to cook. So now you have a 10 minute window to get all of the other stuff caught up to that chicken. Slow is fast, organize yourself, organize your station, cook ahead, learn your timing, and look at the actual physical times on the tickets and see which ones you can clump together. Because you might be able to put, say you have three tickets and they're all within say two minutes of each other and one of them is a quesadilla. Well, if you can get that quesadilla done or at least get it started, then you can send that out. People in general, as customers, psychologically, they kind of expect those things to come out quick. If somebody is sitting at table four and they see table six get a salad, they might be like, man, they came in after me and they got their salad. But then they're also going to think, yeah, but it's a salad. You know, I ordered a you know steak and the chicken or whatever. So you're cooking ahead, you're paying attention to the ticket times, and as long as the servers are then doing their job and communicating not only to the back of house, but they're communicating to the customers, explaining what's going on and keeping them open, customers will be a lot more receptive. Customers often will get more pissed off at the uncertainty than they will uh, being told and keeping things open and uh, being and being felt like, they're still being taken care of in the restaurant. The customers will be receptive to that and they will have a lot more understanding than if the server avoids the table, which I know they do a lot. Avoiding the tables is a really good way to get zero tip and a pissed off customer. 
So some of this does fall on the servers to handle. Getting your composure back is going to save all of these ticket times. Then if you are now having a panic attack, it's gonna take you longer to come out of that panic attack, start cooking and get focused. Then it will be to just get yourself, you know, goose fraba. I feel for you, I really do. There, I've, I've had to deal with my, my own set of stressful situations involving this. If you are on Inner Expo, you know, it, it, it can be rough. It really can, you know. Um, and these tips aren't foolproof. I can tell you to cook ahead, get ahead of the wave, get organized, breathe, whatever. But at the end of the day, a 45-minute ticket time is a 45-minute ticket time. It's, it's not going to make you feel any better. After you get all of this taken care of, at the end of the night, I want you to not be so hard on yourself. Look at this and look back on what happened and try to have an objective, non-judgmental analysis of what happened. Why did you fall behind? Why were you overwhelmed? What exactly is it that you can do to make yourself better than you were yesterday? And that's how you get a chef's mentality. Whatever you did today, Try to do one thing better. Maybe the reason why you fell behind is you got that initial wave of tickets, you got overwhelmed, and then you ran out of product. Maybe now you'll have backups ready and you can have the line stocked. You can be more prepared for an unexpected rush. If you have a prep cook, start learning how to do some of that prep because a lot of times line cooks won't know how to do certain things. Or whatever your unique sides are, whatever you can accomplish, you can get them ready if you know how to prep and you know kind of what the right portions are and all of that kind of stuff. If you are watching this after you had a bad night, I want you to know that you're not alone. We've all had to go through it and it, this makes you a better chef. Look at this as an opportunity for growth instead of a negative. Try to turn it into a positive if you can. I understand how people can be hard on themselves sometime. Like I'm extremely hard on myself. If I'm not operating at 100% all the time, then I, I get down on myself pretty quick. So just try to make sure that you keep your confidence up, stay confident on the line, do a failure analysis, and just try to do better next time. If you have any specific questions, I answer them. I also have a new group that I am starting to kind of gather a bunch of cooks and chefs that actually care, and it's not gonna just be a toxic Facebook group. And I left that down in the description as well. So if you want to join that group, we can uh, start to create a community together of people that will actually help each other out. That's part of the 86th Street Chef project. That's, that's the project part of it. Ask any other questions or if you're an experienced chef yourself and have your own tips on how to deal with it, maybe something I had to cut out or maybe something I missed, let me know in the comments below. If you need more help as a cook or a chef, subscribe to the channel and check out the content because there is a lot of useful things, including red flags on how to avoid restaurants. Like I said, I have that previous video on um, how chefs get in the weeds in the first place and everything from interview tips to how to be a better trainer. Next week, I am actually going to be doing a book review of five best books for our cooks and chefs. Two of them are back behind me. Otherwise, you guys have an awesome day, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.